There's a certain novelty to playing a game on a mobile that was as widely lauded on consoles as Grand Theft Auto 3. The sheer scale of the open world, the complex narratives and the excellent voice acting are all as great as you remember. And it's all right there on a device that's as much about telling your other half to pick up some milk as it is about games. Yet while GTA 3 was a seminal and highly influential release for the PlayStation 2 and PC back in 2001, the same can't be said of its 2011 incarnation on iOS and Android. Yes, it's as clever and action-packed as ever, but it's hampered by touchscreen controls that sap the fun out of your on-the-go crime sprees, so you're as likely to be frustrated as you are enamoured with the beautiful mobile version of Liberty City. For the uninitiated, GTA 3 is a 3D open-world action game set in a fictional metropolis known as Liberty City. It's not the kind of place where you'd want to wander the streets alone at night, or even in the middle of the day. Crime is widespread, fueled by a corrupt police force and government that turns a blind eye to the city's vast criminal underworld. You play as a small-time criminal who is betrayed by his partner in crime in a bank heist. After being freed in an explosion-filled action set piece, you're set loose on the city, looking for work and aspiring to rise up the hierarchy of the criminal underworld. How you go about that is largely up to you. Scattered throughout the city are missions in which you take on tasks for a criminal gang. These include performing simple fetch quests, tailing rival gang members in a car, and assassinating foes. Though there's some repetition in the latter half of the game, there's a huge variety of missions on offer, with excellent narrative and voice acting that's as much about love and romance as it is a gritty crime drama. You need to play through certain missions to unlock other sections of the city or new items, such as guns and vehicles, but because this is an open world game, you can choose to ignore them and simply use Liberty City as your destructive playground. Fancy jacking a car and mowing down a bunch of helpless pedestrians? How about grabbing a rocket launcher and watching stuff burn? Or maybe you're just in the mood for a quiet drive through the city, watching its many citizens go about their daily business as you listen to the excellent radio. It's all yours for the taking and a hell of a lot of fun. Sadly, enjoying these elements to their fullest is hampered by the touchscreen controls. While the solution Rockstar has implemented tries to make the best of the situation, it highlights how easily a great game that wasn't designed for a touch interface is made less enjoyable. Overlaid on the action are virtual touchscreen buttons, which change depending on whether you're driving or on foot. Each action is represented by an icon, such as a car door for jacking a car or a bullet for firing your weapon. On foot, there's a virtual analogue stick for controlling your character. When driving, it changes to simple left and right buttons for controlling your car. It's straightforward enough, but in the heat of the action, the lack of physical feedback makes completing missions unnecessarily difficult. The lack of an extra analogue stick for controlling the camera is also a problem, particularly in a firefight. While you can swipe across the screen to position the camera, you have to take a finger off the analogue stick or fire button, making it difficult to keep your eyes on the action in the middle of a shootout. The system does offer some flexibility in that you can customise the position and size of the virtual controls to make things more comfortable, but it's not enough to make up for the game's shortcomings. Fortunately, the visuals are much better, at least on iOS. Whether you're running the game on an iPhone 4, 4S or iPad, the game runs admirably, with crisp visuals and bags of detail, along with a smooth frame rate. On Android, the quality of the visuals can vary considerably, depending on the device you use. High-end devices like the Motorola Zoom and Galaxy S2 run the game great, but switch to the officially supported Xperia Play and you're treated to a juddering frame rate and random graphical glitches something to bear in mind if you're planning on playing on an older device. So, the underlying game still holds up extremely well, but is it enough to make GTA 3 a great mobile game? Sadly, the answer is no. The control issues keep it from achieving the same level of greatness as its console predecessors and keep you from enjoying everything it has to offer. Not even a visual wow factor is enough to counteract it. The novelty is great while it lasts, but you'll be craving a controller long before you've settled into Liberty City.